Hello and what's up YouTube? If you are thinking about putting spoked wheels on the CB500X, then I'm here to show you an alternative method that you may want to consider. Here is an original CB500X swing arm and rear wheel that we will later change to spoked wheel. Before removing the original wheel of the CB500X, you want to measure the distance of the rim from the swing arm at both sides to determine the offset. The side with a sprocket has greater wheel rim to swing arm clearance compared to the side with a disc brake. That difference of the left and right measurements is the offset and you want to maintain that value when you change to a different wheel. You may notice that the bike is not CB500X, but just ignore that for a moment. What I'm about to show you is a way to put spoke wheels to the CB500X very easy by using the very common CRF250L wheel hub. After removing the CB500X rear wheel, you want to keep these collars or spacers as you may have to use it later. The rear wheel axle of the CB500X and CRF250L happens to be of the same diameter, with the CB500X being a little bit longer. The nut is also in interchangeable. And because of that, putting the rear wheel hub of the CVRF250L to the CB500X is almost plug and play. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm using the collar that came from the CB500X wheel and the chain adjuster from the CRF250L as spacers. Now I'm installing the CRF250L rear wheel to the CB500X swing arm. Take note that I am also using the rear brake caliper and disc brake of the CRF250L. The swing arm of the CB500X is wider than the CRF. That is why you will need these spacers to compensate for additional width. I put the CRF250L chain adjuster to the disc brake side and one of the collars of the CB500X to the sprocket side. This is just for demonstration, but if you want to get really close to the offset, then it is just so easy to have a custom built spacers made to exact dimensions. There you are ladies and gentlemen, the spoke rear wheel on a CB500X done in less than an hour. Measure the clearance of the wheel rim to swing arm at both sides and determine the offset at the sprocket side. It should be really close to the offset you measured with the original CB500X wheels, just a few millimeters off. The rear brake caliper of the CRF250L will work, but you will not have the ABS function. It is now a big deal as I know a lot of guys who use the CB500X intentionally disable the ABS. Next I will show you how I use the rear brake caliper and disc brake of the CB500X to the spoke wheel hub of the CRF250L. And this is actually what I am using now. For this, you will also need the brake disc bolts 
that came with the CB500X. You see that both brake discs have four holes. The holes on the CB500X disc is a little bit farther away from the center. Now since both discs have four holes, we can cut off the edges to create a gap that is equal to the diameter of the disc brake bolts. With a straight edge, mark a line that is tangent to the bolt holes, opposite each other. Then, try to make the cuts as accurate as possible. You want to save those four tiny pieces that we cut off the disc. We'll be needing this later during the assembly. With the width of the gaps equal to the diameter of the bolt holes, the disc can now be attached to the CRF250L wheel hub. I used a, a washer on each bolt to have more contact surface to the disc and securely hold it in place. Those small pieces of metal works as spacers so that the washer sits level to the disc surface. The bolts of the CRF250L will not work in this case because they are shorter. Fortunately, the bolts of the CB500X has the same size threads and that is what I used to attach the disc brake. You may think that this modification is unsafe but I can assure you that it works perfectly fine. Now before I tighten the bolts, I want to make sure the disc is centered correctly. So I measure the distance of edge of the disc to the axle. If you cut those gaps perfectly parallel and exactly the diameter of the bolts, then the disc will automatically center itself. I then tighten the bolts and I did lock tight them all. Later, after I took the bike for a spin and ran a few tests. This tab has to be extended if you are using the original CB500X brake caliper. I simply find a nut that is almost the same thickness of the tab and welded it. You can cut out some steel plate of appropriate thickness if you don't want to weld a nut like I did. With the tab sorted out, we then proceed to attaching the wheel. I am using these washers I bought from the hardware store as spacers. These washers are originally intended for bolts on wooden posts and they fit perfectly with the wheel axle. I can stack them together to get the right width so that we can be really close to the offset value we wanted. Otherwise, it is also very possible to have custom built collars or wheel spacers made by a machinist to the dimensions you specify. So there you are ladies and gentlemen, spoke wheels on the CB500X using CRF250L wheel hub and reusing the CB500X disc brake and disc brake caliper. 
If you want to use a different size rim, say 17 inch rim, then you may need to find someone who can build the wheels for you, as it may require custom length spokes. But that is totally doable and have found several examples. This is by the way is not my original idea. This modification is kind of common to CB500X riders here in Thailand, who modify the CB500X to fit CRF250L wheels and suspension. I would love to know what you think about this video in the comments, and it will help me a lot if you click the like button and hopefully subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and until next time.